In the last episode, we had arrived at the rustic village of Charmy. I think most people would say, I wish I had more time to explore each village. And we were no different, but with favourable weather conditions for the next few days. It was important that we continue on to Manang and the Thorong La Pass. Reaching the eastern end of the Annapurna mountain range, the topography had changed to lush green forest. The name of the range is taken from the Hindu deity Annapurna, meaning the giver of food and nourishment due to the evergreen flowing rivers originating from this mountain range, which generate greenery and support vegetation year round on the lower plains. The diversity of nature is huge on this section Pratang Apple Farm sits within the Manang Valley and is South Asia's largest farm. It was also a great spot to stop for a rest and have some refreshing juice. All along the trail, the bikes have been a great conversation starter, with most finding it fascinating that people would do the Annapurna circuit on a bike. One of the most recorded spots along the track is here. A single lane cut from the side of the mountain with a spectacular drop off into the Marsh Yangi River. After a solid couple of hours on the bike, it was great to pull in to this tea house for a welcome lunch stop. After a good rest and a belly full of momos, it was now time to cover the last few kilometres onto the village of Manang. Arriving at Manang, we would spend an extra day to acclimatise and rest before moving on to Throng Petty Base Camp. The landscape now taking on a colder and deserted alpine appearance. As our day closed, it was replaced by a spectacular night sky the moon and stars lighting up the Tilicho and Annapurna peaks.
With the new day ahead of us, we took the opportunity to explore Gangapurna Lake and the lookout providing a commanding view over the Manang Valley and village. A small 250 metre increase in altitude making our breath to work rate much harder. For our stay in Manang, we were lodged at the Tilicho Hotel, a great place to stay. Friendly staff, Wi-Fi, clean rooms with linen, and an excellent menu comprising local and western style meals. You might even make some new friends. It was now time for us though to push on to Throng Petty Base Camp. From this point on the trail narrows down to foot, bicycle and animal traffic only. Inevitably the trail bottlenecks in places but after a couple of good early sections of downhill we made clear separation from the trekkers giving us a good run on the throng petty. After a five hour transit, Throng Pretty Base Camp was in sight. The final downhill and long suspension bridge separating us from the other side of the valley. It is here that the value of a good guide can be seen. Raz, our guide, kept us on the right hand side of the valley trail due to the increased potential for rock avalanches or landslides to occur on the other side. Great advice. Raz leads the way, demonstrating good technique to show us how to get around the tight zigzags on the approach to the bridge. This suspension bridge was 350 metres long and with a strong crosswind and prayer flags trying to grab at the unsuspecting cyclist's handlebars, it required to be crossed with caution. As I looked up, a mysterious face appeared in the mountainside on the other side of the bridge, as if keeping guard over the bridge and the Throng Petty base camp. A 12 hour layover at Throng Petty Base Camp would provide us with a couple of good meals and hopefully some rest prior to our 4.30am start the next day to move on to high camp and through the pass. At 4,540 metres it was definitely getting hard to breathe. Our oxygen saturation levels had started to drop. The camp was at full capacity with trekkers and just like us, eager to take on the ascent up to the pass. Everyone saw the acute mountain sickness warning sign at the entrance and in the back of one's mind a mixture of we can do this with a bit of anxiety creeping in about pushing beyond 5,000 metres.
Our hands and feet freeze and energy credits left within are used up as we tackle the steep ascent through high camp and on the throng la. Snow and ice make riding a challenge and a crash barely 10 minutes after our summit elation jolts us back into reality. <laughs>